Hey guys, it's Laura. Welcome back. So today's video is going to be my July wrap up. Um, I ended up reading 17 books in July. That was seriously all thanks to the reading rush because I did manage to read seven books in seven days. So that really helped out a lot. Um, I did do a mid month wrap up for July. So I'll leave that down below if you want more th of my thoughts on the first four books that I talked about um, at the middle in the middle of the month. But I'm gonna quickly tell you what those were and give you my star rating. The first book I finished was Sorcery of Thorns, which I gave five out of five stars, new favorite. Then The Inexplicable Logic of My Life by Benjamin Alary Sands, which I gave a four stars to. Then I read Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty, and I gave this four stars as well. And then I read The Vanishing Stare by Maureen Johnson, and I gave this four stars. So again, if you want to hear more of my thoughts, I'll link my mid-month wrap up down below. Okay, so let's get into the books that I read in the second half of the month. Um, the first book that I finished was With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. So I picked this up because I absolutely adored The Poet X by her, and so I definitely wanted to pick up her second book. Um, and I loved it. So in this book, we're following Amani and Amani is a senior in high school. Amani is a teen mom. She got pregnant when she was a freshman in high school and now she has her daughter who she calls baby girl who is two years old, I believe when we enter the story. Um, and we follow Amani as she has a real love for cooking and she's trying to figure out how to pursue her dreams while also taking care of this incredible responsibility that she has. And I thought it was just so incredibly well done. This book made me so hungry. <laughs> just like all the talk of food and how food brings people together and how food brings family together and how important that can be in your family. And it really made me miss my mom's food because since I moved to California, she's all the way in Florida and I don't get to eat her food all the time. I also really enjoyed the friendship between Amani and her best friend, Angelica. Amani and when she became pregnant, you know, as a teenager, you get people really stereotyping you and thinking you're easy or just all the crap that you get being a teen mom and being pregnant in high school. And Angelica was there with her through all of that and they just had such a beautiful friendship that I just I really loved so much. Elizabeth Acevedo's writing is absolutely stunning. It's beautiful, it's poetic, it's lyrical and I thought that it was just a story so well told and I highly recommend this book. I gave it a five out of five stars. I loved it so much. I loved seeing the growth of Imani's character throughout this. I mean, when you have a child at such a young age, you do have to do a lot of growing up. But I mean, Amani is still a teenager. She's still making a lot of mistakes and she's still learning about life. And I think that it was just portrayed so perfectly. Um, the one negative thing, which is not really a negative thing I have to say about this book is that Amani, is that we came across those, that infamous YA line, um, Amani let out a breath she didn't know she was holding three times. Three times she did this and every time I saw that I just kind of rolled my eyes <laughs> but honestly the story was just so overwhelmingly beautiful that by finishing this book I mean I let out a breath I didn't know I was holding you know what I mean so yeah I gave this five stars and I highly recommend this book the next book I picked up was Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman I finally read this mostly because I really wanted to watch the um, Amazon original show based on this book. So I'm glad that I finally got to it. I listened to it on audio and seriously, the audio experience was amazing. That narrator was one of the best audiobook narrators that I've ever heard. I really enjoyed it. So if you don't know what Good Omens is about, it follows an angel named Aziraphale and a demon named Crawley. And they kind of become unlikely friends. So time for Armageddon to start, but Aziraphale and Crowley realize that they kind of really like life the way it is and they don't want Armageddon to start. So they come together and try to delay Armageddon. And there's also the fact that the Antichrist has gone missing. Um, and this was just honestly one of the funniest books that I have ever read in my life. I was laughing from beginning to end out loud, sometimes hysterically. It was just 
so, so good. I highly recommend this. I give it a five out of five stars. I watched the show on Amazon and it was actually really, really good as well. Seriously, one of the best book to TV show adaptations I've seen in a while. So I loved it so much. It was just a really fun ride. So in July, we celebrated the 50th anniversary of our flight to the moon. And I thought I would celebrate that by picking up a book about the moon, um, or at least one that takes place on the moon. And that is 172 Hours on the Moon by Johan Harstead. So this is a YA horror thriller that takes place on the moon. Um, so the setup of this is that NASA has decided to send three teenagers to the moon to, to kind of research and learn and just, it's obviously an incredible opportunity. So NASA holds this worldwide lottery and three teenagers are picked to go to the moon. However, as soon as they arrive on the moon, things start going horribly wrong. And there is a very sinister presence lurking about on the moon, sabotaging everything. So this was a really quick read. I will give it that. It was definitely thrilling and it was actually pretty creepy once you kind of figure out what they were facing on the moon. Um, it was pretty creepy and I'm not gonna lie, the imagery kind of haunted me for a while after I finished this book, but I finished it in like a day and a half. It was so fast paced and really a book that you could just sink right into. However, I, I feel like the whole setup for this book, NASA Sending Teenagers to the Moon, it's something that would literally never happen. Especially once you find out the reason why NASA is going to the moon and what they hope to accomplish. And you kind of, early on, um, within like the first chapter, you get, you get these hints that NASA knows that something not right is happening on the moon and they're still deciding to send children up there makes absolutely no sense. So it was kind of hard to suspend my disbelief in that aspect. It was just okay. It wasn't anything special. I ended up giving it a three out of five stars and I would still recommend it because I think that it does essentially what it sets out to do. It's a very thrilling ride and it really does suck you in and it really does creep you out. One of the really creepy elements of this book is that all these things start happening and all these things start going wrong. There's absolutely no one to call on for help. There's no one coming to save these kids. So I thought that was pretty good, but the writing itself wasn't the best. I got really irritated at, at most of the characters and I kind of thought it read a little bit young, but all in all, it was an enjoyable read and I gave it a three out of five stars. And then I finally picked up The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J Maas. This is the bind up of novellas in the Throne of Glass series. Um, and I've actually really enjoyed this. So I have actually read Throne of Glass and Crown of Midnight. And before I continued on with the series, I wanted to go ahead and read the novella bind up. And like I said, I really enjoyed it. I, we got a lot of backstory on Selena. And what I really liked about it is that there are five, I think, short stories in here. Yeah, there's five short stories in here. And they are all kind of in chronological order. So you get to follow Selena's journey chronologically, which I really enjoyed. And I really liked seeing like how everything went down, how she ended up in Endovier. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. I gave it a four out of five stars. I am excited to continue with this series. I have been enjoying it. The books have all pretty much been four stars for me. So not quite five stars, but still really enjoyable. So I can't wait to continue on with this series. So now we're gonna kind of briefly talk about all the books that I read during the reading rush. So I did a reading rush vlog. So I will link that down below in the description as well if you wanna hear more of my thoughts. Um, I just have so many books to go through so I don't wanna like spend too much time on each one. Um, but the first book that I finished for the reading rush was Descender volume three. Uh, this is volume four. I had to return volume three to the library, but I ended up giving this four stars and volume three was pretty much um, a backstory on most of the characters that I found incredibly interesting and really enjoyed. Descender is a sci-fi graphic novel series that follows this little robot, Tin21, who woke up after 10 years to a world where robots 
are completely outlawed and he is the most wanted robot in the galaxy. There's a lot of different people who are after him, but all he wants to do is find his brother, who he was a companion to when, you know, he was when they were little. And it's just, it's really sweet. I loved the first volume. The second volume I didn't love as much. The series kind of went up and down for me, which you'll see because I actually finished it out this month. So we'll get to the rest of them soon. But volume three, I ended up giving a four stars. Next, I finished Mirage by Samaya Daoud and I absolutely loved this. I thought it was so beautifully written. So in this story, we're following our main character, Amani, and she is um kidnapped and taken from her home and she's taken to royal palace because she is nearly identical to the princess of this world princess maram and princess maram needs a body double because she is so hated by her people and she is constantly receiving threats on her life um this takes place in one of the most unique settings that I've ever read. This is a Moroccan inspired fantasy, but it also has this science fiction element where we have intergalactic space travel and we have robots and droids and we have really advanced technology. And I just thought those two kind of different settings brought together was one of the most unique things that I've ever read before. I loved the way they fit together. I kind of loved the intersection of science and scientific advancements along with the old gods. And I, I just think the two of those things together was just so incredibly beautiful. The writing is so incredibly beautiful and I ended up loving the main character of Amani. There's also a relationship that develops in here. A romance starts to develop between Amani and Princess Maram's betrothed. And I loved the romance as well. I just overall thought this was really great. I listened to this on audio. And I might have mentioned this in my vlog, but I definitely want to reread this because I think that if I read it physically, I would have enjoyed it a lot more. I gave it a four out of five stars and I thought it was really well done. And then I picked up The Princess and the Fangirl by Ashley Poston. I don't know if it's Poston or Poston, and I feel like I keep saying it two different ways all the time. <laughs> Following a character from the first book, um, who is Jessica Stone. She is an actress and she played Princess Amara in the uh, reboot film Starfield. Starfield is kind of like a combination of Star Trek and Star Wars. And we are following Imogen or Mo as she goes by, who is a fan, who is a fangirl of Starfield. And they look so similar to each other that Mo gets mistaken for Jess and they end up kind of switching places because what happens is that someone, the script for the new Starfield movie and is like leaking it online. And so Jess wants to pretend to be Imogen so that she can kind of find this person and find out what's going on. And it's another really fun and fluffy contemporary from Ashley Poston. I absolutely love this series. Geekerella is one of my new favorite books. And I loved this one almost just as much. It was a five star for me, but it was just so beautifully done. It talks a lot about celebrity and how we treat celebrities, how we feel so entitled to their lives. And we forget that they are actual people with feelings and the things that we say about them online, how that affects them. It also talked about like not knowing who you are or who you want to be and feeling like you don't matter or you're not good enough and how Ashley Poston kind of weaves this positive message of the of you being good enough and you being worth it and how important you really are it just it's really it's really important to me I think it's important to a lot of teens who will read this book and this series and it's one of the reasons why I love it so much. But yeah, I gave it a five stars. I highly recommend this series, especially if you are familiar with fandom culture. And I think that Ashley Poston really nails fandom culture so well. And I just didn't, I just love them so much. Next, I finished Grim Lovelies by Megan Shepard. This takes place in Paris and it follows a group of beasties. Beasties are basically animals that have been enchanted into human form. So we follow these beasties who are servants to a witch. However, that witch dies 
and they have only three days to figure out a way to stay human, which is what they really want. But they're also on the run because it is believed that they're responsible for their witch's death. And so we follow our main character, Nuke, and the other beasties as they try to figure out a way to stay human. And I thought it was it was pretty interesting, but it wasn't anything that was particularly special or memorable. I ended up giving it 3 out of 5 stars. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. It mostly held my attention while I, while I read it, but... It's not something that I'm going to reread or honestly something that I'm going to remember. And then I picked up The Near Witch by V.E. Schwab and I really loved this. So I, I went into this with low expectations and I don't really know why I needed to do that, but I thought it's V.E. Schwab's very first book. It wasn't very popular when it came out and I didn't think it would be up to the level of her books now and how much I love them, but I loved this one. Um, we are following our main character, Lexi. She lives in a town called Near, where there are never any strangers and everything kind of pretty much stays the same. And one day a stranger comes to town. And when that stranger comes to town, children start to go missing. So the stranger is automatically accused of taking these children. However, Lexi knows in her heart that that might not be the case. And so she seeks out this stranger and together they try to figure out who is taking these children. And it was just really beautifully written. It reads like a fairy tale, which is something a little bit different, I feel, for V.E. Schwab, but it was still so well written and, and the characters were well developed and well thought out, thought out. I loved our main character, Lexi. She is a very strong, determined character and I really enjoyed reading about her. I really enjoyed reading about this town and how they kind of view the world and how anything different is basically to be feared. I don't know, I just really enjoyed this, guys. It was it was a five star for me. Next, I picked up A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. I've had this on my shelf for a while and I don't know why it took me so long to get to it, but I adored this. It was so beautiful and it just really hit me. <laughs> it really hit me in the feels. Oh my goodness. I cried so much when I read this and I also watched the movie last week and the movie really made me feel things too. This book deals with grief and loss and family and love and, and guilt in such a beautiful, beautiful way. and. I thought it was just, it was perfect. It was so well done. The illustrations in this version were so great as well. I loved the black and white illustrations. This was a five star book for me as well. I had a really good reading month, guys. <laughs> and this was the last book I ended up reading for The Reading Rush, which was Descender Volume 4. I talked about this series already, really enjoyed it. I gave Volume 4, I gave Volume 4 four stars as well really enjoyed this one and in the last couple days of the month i also picked up descender volume 5 and descender volume 6 and this is basically the conclusion of this series i know that there's like a spin-off called ascender i believe so i might be picking that up because i really did like the direction that this went in i thought i was just kind of blown away i gave volume 5 three stars and I gave volume six, four stars. Okay, the last little thing that I read this month was Memento. And this is a little novella um, in the Illuminae Files by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. It follows Aiden and how Aiden became the murderous IA maniac that we all know and love. And I really enjoyed this, really enjoyed it. I would probably give it like a a full five stars if I was able to rate it. And it kind of just made me want to reread the Illuminate files again. So I might be doing that soon. But um, those are all the books that I read in the month of July. I'm sorry if this video is incredibly long. I guess I've been filming for like 30 minutes, so that's great. Um, but yeah, 17 books. This is probably the most I've read in a month so far this year. And I really do think that I have the reading rush to thank for that. So I'm so glad that I participated in that this year. I hope your reading month was really great in July. Do let me know down in the comments how your reading went in July and what your favorite book 
book-wise. Let me know if you have any thoughts on any of the books that I mentioned today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it if you did. Also, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos from me, and I will see you in my next one. Bye, guys.